Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video and in this video we are going to ask the question does accessibility still ruin games for casual players, right? Does accessibility ruin games for casual players is the topic like I just said and real quickly this video is sponsored by everyone who supports me at Steam it on Steam, you know, liking those videos, you know, helping me build up a little bit of money just because you know I'm going to need that soon. But anyway, let's get into the video. And to start with this video, actually, we're going to talk about what is accessibility in a video game. Because this is, a, this is something that I don't think a lot of people know. So accessibility is, the, is how easy is a game to understand and how simple is it, basically. A good example of a game that is not accessible is Civilization. Civilization takes a long time before you even stand a chance at beating the computers. Even Civilization Revolution, one of the most, like, literally, actually the most simple Civilization game of all, still is not accessible. Then you get to the other spectrum of Call of Duty World War II, which is extremely accessible. Any Call of Duty game um, is accessible. Even the Jump Pack ones, they're, they're very simple, still accessible. So, I am a casual gamer, right? And that doesn't mean I am low skill and dumb when it comes to video games. I'm actually a very experienced first-person shooter um, gamer. Pretty much any first-person shooter game that, you know, maybe movement, like up and down jumping, like Halo or the some of the Jetpack Call of Duties, maybe that throws me off a little bit. But generally, I'm not going to suck at a shooter game. Even Battlefield with Bullet Drop and bullet timing i'm not gonna do bad at those games at all i can figure them out very quick this actually gave me an advantage when i play started playing PUBG on xbox it's a more casual game for me because i understand how first person shooters work and that's a key component is accessibility means that you're gonna drop skilled players right destiny um i think it was destiny one there was a good compromise for this, a very accessible game, but the end game was you guys got to grind out for the hardest loot on hardest difficulties. Difficulties are a great way, by the way, to make games accessible. You know, Halo, Halo, Halo 2, Halo 3, the campaigns have four difficulties, easy, normal, heroic, and legendary, and if you play those difficulties, you can see, you know, easy is definitely for people that are not experienced, but if a pro plays on easy, it gets very boring. Right? You might be able to speedrun the game, that might make it fun, but overall, your experience playing the expected Halo experience on easy, if you're good at the game, is boring. And that's, an, that's like I said, the component is accessibility still can ruin games for casual gamers. I played a lot of Call of Duty World War II, and I, I enjoy a skill gap not as much, like, I enjoy a very high skill gap, actually, I'm not gonna lie, because what I do is, even though I'm a casual gamer, is if a game's fun, I will still play it, you know, even if new games come out, think of Rainbow Six Siege, I, you know, a lot of people still play that game, by the way, though, because it's Rainbow Six Siege, but, you know, Rainbow Six Siege is still fun to me, I still play, you know, I don't play Halo 4 and 5, because I don't like those games, but Halo Reach multiplayer, I'll still turn on Halo Reach. I'll still turn on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. If it's if my 360 is hooked up to the internet, I'll turn it on, right? So there's still games that I still play because they're good. I'm one of those gamers that you might have Call of Duty 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? If Call of Duty 1 is still more fun than Call of Duty 6, I will play Call of Duty 1 because it's more fun. So as a casual gamer, when I see that Call of Duty World War II is extremely accessible and there's no skill gap, that means there's no challenge. I don't have a good time when I play that game anymore. Like, I maybe up to first prestige. I played up to first prestige. I've got my, I'm at like sixth prestige or something like that. But I played up to first prestige and from first onward, it was just a grind for headshots, for camos. That's what I wanted to do. Level up is not even leveling up it's not even competing with other people at this point it's figuring out the best way to get xp because it's just too accessible civilization is an interesting story with me is i've just played it so much 
then I, I, I just understand how it works. All right? I just... Well, yeah, like, I, I would be a horrible teacher for civilization because I would just right off the bat be like, so you always want to build this building, this building, this building. You know, I have a system. And I developed that system because I don't like to play Civilization 24-7. Then, even though most people actually like to play that game 24-7, I don't. So I think I've helped today to show that accessibility does ruin casual gaming. Rainbow Six Siege is not an accessible game, but you can still play it casually and have a fun time. And granted, it's not really a casual game, but still, Battlefield 1. There is, by the way, in Battlefield 1, there is a skill gap. It is very apparent to me that there is a skill gap, but it's still fun to play that game casually. It's fun to just sit in a trench, hold the line with, you know, a mounted machine gun and just do that or maybe a rifle so at the end of the day accessibility you know it might help new new and noob gamers come in but it does not help with the casual gaming crowd so that's it for this video guys thank you for watching if you enjoyed you can tell me in the comments below subscribe if you're new for more videos on casual gaming and gaming tips i'm Pacific the casual gamer i suck just as bad as you do at video games and i will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or esteem it post of whatever I decide to make.